If you use the Ecamm Live virtual camera feature with Zoom, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and in this video we're talking about the uh, virtual camera feature of Zoom, uh, of Ecamm Live rather, to use specifically with Zoom. Uh, and I want to just highlight some uh, potential issue that you may have run into with Zoom uh, where you might not feel like you're getting quite the picture quality you deserve <laughs> out of it. Uh, well, there is a reason for that, and I'm going to explain that in this video. But I need to just back up for one moment in case there is anybody who has stumbled across this video who uh, wasn't even aware of what Ecamm Live was. You know, maybe you've been searching for something related to Zoom virtual cameras and so on, and have just found this video. Well, Ecamm Live is a live production environment for the Mac that allows you to produce videos like this on the fly, adding in overlays, sound effects, things like that, uh, all, as I say, in a sort of live live production environment. You can also use it for streaming, for live streaming, but it also does have a built-in uh, virtual camera so that you can use this as the feed that's going into your Zoom meetings. And what that means is you can add all of the sort of production values that you can do with Ecamm Live, like putting in overlays like this, for example. This is a good time to tell you if you want to try Ecamm Live, go to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm and uh, get your free trial. And in fact, for the month of July of uh, 2021, there is 30% off. So it's no better time to actually try it out and sign up than, uh, than this month. But yes, it does allow you to do all of this sort of stuff that I'm doing here in these videos live with no editing. And you can bring all of these production values into your uh, Zoom meetings and presentations or webinars or whatever it is. Uh, there's also an uh, interview mode where you can actually bring guests on into your production and then feed that into your webinar or whatever, sort of separate from uh, Zoom. So that's another feature that you can do with, uh, with Ecamm Live. And it's it's what I use for making these videos. It's what I use for my Zoom calls, Teams meetings, things like that. And it is a bit of a game changer, really. You can also really level up your presentations as well by combining this with something like Keynote or uh, uh, PowerPoint and actually bringing in those presentations into your uh, productions and feeding that into Zoom as well. But I did a video all about how to do that, so I'll leave a link to that up in the top corner. But anyway, that is a brief introduction to Ecamm Live. But for those of you who are already aware of it, <laughs> then uh, let me now talk about how to actually start using it with Zoom. And let's get on to the main uh, main issue that I want to discuss. Not discuss, solve, because <laughs> it is a solvable problem uh, that has been solved. So <laughs> don't worry about it. So first of all, when you install uh, Ecamm Live and when you are signed up to the pro account, the virtual camera feature is something that you will need to install. But don't worry, it's not tricky. And I'll show you how to do that. If I just share my screen, come into uh, demo mode for one second. And then here in the menu at the top, you'll see this little output menu. And if I click onto that, then down here we've got virtual cam and it will just say install virtual cam when you first start out. So just make sure you click that to install it. But then you can simply toggle it off at will. Uh, and when you are in the uh, the sort of preview window here, uh, you'll see that the uh, cam is basically just, in fact, when I use my pro mouse, it disappears off the screen. That's no good, is it? <laughs> it's just here anyway. You can see this little cam icon. That means that you've got your virtual camera active so then it will show up in your system as just another camera and uh, perhaps this is a good time to actually come out of demo mode and show you how to actually get this then into zoom uh, or in fact any other application uh, there is a bit of a workaround that you need to do if you want to bring it into Microsoft Teams. So I'll have to make a separate video about that because uh, Teams is a little bit more finicky about uh, exactly what virtual cameras they allow or don't allow. So uh, I'll make a video about that one separately. <laughs> but uh, if I do my uh, screen sharing again, so now I'm in my Zoom. And if I come into my Zoom preferences, uh, just clicking the little cogwheel and bring up this. This is where you would select your video and audio. Uh, so come down to video and I've already got it selected there. But if you come to this drop down where you could select your camera, it simply appears in here as Ecamm Live virtual camera. So just like uh, my uh, FaceTime camera for my Mac or my uh, uh, webcam, my Logitech webcam or these other, these are all actually other virtual web webcams that I've tried out in the past, but uh, I'm always just defaulting to Ecamm Live now. And as you can see, uh, the little preview that uh, Zoom gives you is a preview of what you're seeing. And that's because it's actually working, isn't it? <laughs> it's taking my uh, Ecamm Live camera and uh, putting whatever is in Ecamm Live that would then be feeding into Zoom. Now, incidentally, there is audio as well. And uh, if you are going to be using uh, 
two-way audio where you need to have uh, maybe you're doing a production where you're bringing guests in or things like that and need to feed the audio into zoom and maybe you need the output from zoom coming back into ecamm live to feed back out to uh, your interviewees on ecamm live something like that um then you may need another bit of software which i've discussed in a another video which i'll leave a link to in the top corner which is called loopback but a lot of people think that you absolutely need loopback in order to use zoom or use the virtual camera feature with zoom but that's not actually the case so do check out that other video uh, to see if loopback is something that you actually need or not but in any case let's come back to this section because uh, we've now selected our virtual camera so everything seems to be working doesn't it so what exactly is the issue and what's the point of this video why isn't it ending now well the reason is uh, zoom is treating this as a camera and some people don't realize but uh, when you've got two people in a zoom meeting it will be broadcasting the uh, images from uh, the cameras uh, at high definition to the to attendees so you'll see each other in high definition but as soon as you add a third person into that call three or more people uh, it will actually drop the resolution down to 720 uh, from 1080 so that means that you're then getting lower resolution from the camera uh, but because we're using ecamm live we might be sharing our desktop for example you might be doing a screen demo or something like that uh, you wouldn't necessarily want your high definition desktop being reduced down and low into a lower resolution. Now, if you are doing screen sharing natively in Zoom, the way they'd obviously intended things to be done, um, then what they do is they actually, when you go into your uh, screen sharing in Zoom and share your screen, then they actually bump the resolution back up so that if you're sharing a you know, uh, high definition a screen, for example, your full monitor, um, then it would broadcast that at high definition. So that is how they get around that, or that's how they, they do it. And the reason why they reduce the uh, resolution of video is because it's just a bandwidth thing, really. You know, as the more people you get on, the more bandwidth it is taking up in order to broadcast those high definition images. And so that is why they do it. So how are we going to get around that in here? Well, there are three ways to do it. <laughs> Um, and some apply to all and some only apply to those on the pro plan I'm afraid of a, of uh, zoom so if I come back to my screen sharing for a minute and uh, share the correct window this might help uh, where is it there we go get these out of the way I need to just drop those down so here we go I'm in my uh, settings in zoom now so if you are on the pro account in zoom or higher uh, it doesn't work on the uh, free plan i think it's a free plan isn't it the one below that uh, but if you are on the free plan then i'm afraid this doesn't work but uh, if you come down to your account settings so go into your account account settings and then come to the uh, in meeting and advanced section here and then we're going to click on that one and it's going to take us down to all of these settings as you can see there are really quite a lot of settings in zoom aren't there and in fact if anybody would like to see a video specifically about all of the different settings in Zoom, then leave a comment down below and I'll uh, make that video. In fact, I will probably make the video anyway, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, leave a comment down below if you, you'd, be, you'd like to see that and maybe I'll bump it up the uh, list a little bit. So uh, yes, but anyway, as I was saying, so we come into the in meeting and advanced section. And then if we scroll down a little bit, what you'll see is uh, this one here. Uh, it says group HD video and that's the one that we could toggle on uh, and basically as it says this activates higher quality video for host and participants and what that means is it's going to stop it dropping down that quality when you add more people into the meeting uh, uh, but as it says here this will use more bandwidth so do bear that in mind it's going to be a bandwidth issue for you uh, but also it's going to be a bandwidth issue on the other end if you are broadcasting those uh, things over to the other side as well uh, so that is something that you may or may not want to toggle on but it will resolve this issue because you'll then be broadcasting uh, in higher resolution and so that will then mean that all of your ecamm live will be broadcast uh, over to your participants and that will let uh, as i say it will resolve the issue so there is another way to do it because as i say that is something that's only available on the uh on the pro plan and above for zoom so but there is another way to do it and it's a bit of a workaround but it does work and uh, ecamm live have thought about this so first of all let me come into my demo mode of ecamm live again and there's two ways and it's to do with using screen sharing in zoom whereby instead of actually having the zoom uh, instead of having the ecamm live virtual camera feeding into zoom to share our screen what we're going to use is we're going to use the zoom screen sharing to share our ecamm live window 
and our Ecamm Live window can then share whatever else we want to share. So it's kind of like two layers of sharing, if you like. And so uh, the way that you could do that is uh, now I'm in uh, Ecamm Live, obviously, in my demo mode. If I go into the output, uh, you can also output to a monitor. So we could output to a video, video monitor. So what I'm doing at the moment is I've got my Ecamm Live window that you can see on the screen, the one that I'm actually sitting in. <laughs> and I'm doing my live demo mode of my whole desktop. But I'm actually also... Uh, I've got a video monitor of my output from Ecamm Live, which is going to my third monitor. So I've got uh, here, I've got my uh, uh, the main monitor that I'm using, but I could also output it to my, uh, this one. This is actually, I don't know why it says color LCD, because that is actually my MacBook. So it could be labeled a little bit better. But anyway, that is actually my MacBook's main monitor, uh, my MacBook screen. And then I've got this one here, which is a, a third monitor. So I am currently uh, putting out the, output from Ecamm Live is going to this particular monitor. So that is showing everything that you're seeing in the output. And uh, in the same way, on a Zoom call, if I wanted to share my uh, my output from Ecamm Live, what I could do then is I could make sure that this is on. So video, video monitor is going to this other monitor. Uh, and then in Zoom, what I could do is I could go to my screen sharing in Zoom. So let me just uh, come out of this demo mode for a moment. And what I'll do is I'll come over to... Uh, this little screenshot. I haven't decided to uh, actually open Zoom and do this live because then I would be running Zoom and this at the same time and it would cause a bit of an uh, infinite loop of, uh, <laughs> of screen sharing. So uh, I've just taken a screenshot of the screen sharing window in Zoom. So presumably if you're a Zoom user you'll be familiar with this little screen that I'm going to show you now. And this is basically when you're in Zoom and uh, this is just a screenshot of it. But when you're in Zoom and you click share screen uh, with the little sharing feature that's built in in Zoom, you get a few options. You get to either share a particular screen, so it's called desktop one, desktop two, or desktop three, uh, or you get to share the little whiteboard that's built into it, um, or you can share a device, or you can share a specific window. Well, what, so what I was just telling you there was, if, because I'm using the uh, the monitor, the video monitor feature of Ecamm Live, uh, this is uh, my desktop one, which happened to be the Zoom call that I was uh, running at the time of uh, just testing this. Uh, desktop two was this main desktop that I'm looking at now, which has got my sort of all my Ecamm Live controls on it. And desktop three was that one that I was using as the, uh, the video monitor. So if in Zoom I was to share desktop three, then what that would do is that would then, rather than Zoom thinking that this was a virtual camera, it would treat the output because it's taking the full uh, the full output from that monitor. It would think that that was screen sharing, and so it would maintain that higher resolution, which is what we're trying to do. Now, what you need to bear in mind, though, is for your uh, uh, guests or the other people that are on the uh, meeting with you, uh, if you think about what happens normally when you share your screen in Zoom. Uh, you get your screen sharing window, which is the screen that you're sharing. Uh, but then you also get your little camera picture in the top as well, don't you? Because then you can see all of the participants of the meeting and you are one of the participants, but you're just sharing your screen. Whereas now what they're going to see is they're going to see the Ecamm Live window where you might be sharing your screen through Ecamm Live. Uh, but they're also going to see your little, uh, what's normally your camera window, but that's also going to be the same thing because you're using Ecamm Live as your virtual camera. So what you may want to do is just actually toggle off your camera on uh, in Zoom so that it just doesn't duplicate those two things. And so then you just get the, the main live sharing window. And if you're doing something like this, you can still have yourself in the shot. For example, if you're doing a, sh a screen share, and you could still be in the window in this in this way, like as I am in this little box, <laughs> if you see what I mean. So that is how you would do it by sharing it to a desktop. Now, what happens if you're on a laptop and you don't have an extra desktop? Well, there's a couple of ways around that. Now, first of all is, I'm gonna link to another video I did about this, but there's these little things that you can get called virtual monitors and it is basically a little hdmi plug uh, but with no cable on the end of it it's just a little sort of dummy thing and they, these are used in uh, sort of servers and things like that where you want to have it's called a headless mac or a headless computer and it basically means a computer that's got no monitor uh, but you plug one of these in and the, the computer thinks that there is a, mo a monitor attached and you can actually share to that so I won't go into this in full detail here because I did do a whole video about it, but this is a way that if you wanted to have like a, a secondary display to share things to that you didn't actually need to see, uh, 
there are use cases for that and this is one of them then these little things that cost five dollars or something like that is a way around that so i'll link as i say link to that video up in the top corner and in the description as well now there is another way that you can get around this issue the third way and uh, i'm going to show you that if i come into my demo mode uh, what we can do also is if we come into our output again so all of these things that i'm talking to you about the virtual camera and everything they're all in this output menu so here we've uh, we've already looked at this video monitor one uh, we've looked at our virtual camera we've also got this one called sharing window so you can toggle this one on and off and by the way this shows up here is this little uh, symbol here it looks like two windows the virtual cam is there and then this one is uh, says out when we've got this uh, little uh, the uh, the output monitor switched on but so we come down and we have sharing window switched on and what that does is once again in sharing in ecamm live uh, sorry in zoom i beg your pardon <laughs> then what will happen then is if i come over to uh, my uh, demo uh, screen here again and i need to come out of demo mode doing too many things at one time here so this is back into our zoom screen sharing so we've already looked at how we could share our desktop if we've got it going to that one uh, but we can also use this one so the ecamm live sharing window and that will do exactly the same thing it will share the output from ecamm live and we just need to make sure that that is uh, toggled on in those settings so i hope that i have explained that adequately and i hope that that is uh, clear i know there was a couple of different pro, pro plans we're talking about so ecamm live pro plan and the zoom pro plan uh two different screen sharings ecamm live screen sharing and zoom screen sharing so uh, it can sound a little bit confusing but hopefully uh we may have managed to cut through some of the uh <laughs> the, the confusion there i hope but if i haven't and there's any questions left unanswered then please do feel free to leave them in the comments and i will uh, certainly get around to answering them as soon as possible uh, because i'm here to hopefully help and make things a lot easier rather than adding complexity <laughs> and while you are down there if indeed you do go down to comment then don't forget to also like and subscribe to the channel turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever i do make any more videos i'll leave a link to some of my other zoom related videos over in the uh, bottom right and until the next video have a great day.